So Grace Randolph put out this tweet saying, Ben Affleck doesn't want to come back. Henry Cavill ain't getting invited back for reasons I've already told you countless times that are as much on him as Warner Brothers. Uh, You guys are hoping for something that is an impossibility. You guys got to move on. Now, this is coming from this tweet right here where she basically said that, you know, the Flash movie is going to reboot Henry Cavill's Superman and replace Ben Affleck's Batman with Batgirl and Supergirl and that there's going to be a lot of reboots, that the Snyderverse is practically being entirely rebooted in the Flash movie. Now, I'm not going to go much into details on that because I am planning on doing a live stream on that tomorrow, so you guys stay tuned for that. But today, I'm going to ask the question, did Grace Randolph betray the Snyder fans? The real answer is no, and if you disagree with me, I'm sorry, but you got to get off the internet. I'm, I'm sorry, but the whole restore the Snyderverse thing, no. Hashtag back there. I'm getting exhausted with it. And this is one of my examples because I saw a lot of people starting to make these clickbaity titles, these weird thumbnails saying, Grace Randolph betrayed the fans. And it, it, it's getting exhausted hearing Snyder fans constantly say, Warner Bros. is betraying the fans. They're not betraying the fans. They're betraying a section of the fandom, but not the entire fan base. Because I feel like people constantly keep forgetting that the Snyder verse movies were insanely divisive, meaning... That a lot of people hated these movies. I often time when I tell people I love Batman vs Superman, I often get lots of people telling me, "Oh, that movie sucked. That po- that movie's terrible." So it, it's like the Snyderverse fandom isn't the fans because that's a too vague of a term, and I'm getting a little exhausted of it. So Grace Randolph did not betray the fans. But before I start off today's video, y'all make sure to smash that like button, hit the subscribe button, and turn on the notification bells. That way you can be notified of future content here on the channel. My name is Isaac, and I'm the host of your multiverse of movies. But Grace Randolph was practically saying, you know, the Snyderverse is an impossibility. You guys got to move on. And look, let's look at the facts. The Snyderverse being restored is much more impossible than the Snyder Cut being released. I, I've heard some people say that it's not. They could just release these movies on HBO Max. Look, if you release, like, let's say, for instance, let's say Warner Brothers calls up Zack Snyder, calls up Henry, calls up Ben, calls up Gal and everyone, and says, hey, look, let's come back. Let's make Justice League Part 2 and Part 3. And let's do it all on HBO Max. Well, they would just release them on HBO Max. You are now planning the biggest financial disaster in franchise history doing that because it's been proven a, a tons of times that streaming is nowhere near as big as theatrical. The only way these movies can make any profit is going theatrical. And there is no way Zack Snyder, there's no way Warner Bros. would ever, ever just do an entire Snyderverse on hbo max because it's completely ridiculous i keep hearing everyone saying why don't you just do that make make a little bit more money and the only way that would happen is if all the actors took massive pay cuts if they had a smaller budget for their movies if everything was practically like streaming streaming budget a streaming budget that's what it would be there's no way in hell what warner bros ever even think about just putting it on hbo max so i understand it, it is and look the snyder cut was different because the snyder cut was a movie that was mostly filmed everything besides the extra scenes were like jared leto's joker you know everything with that 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 was all it's all almost all filmed they just needed to fi- finish the vfx and even some of it was finished so that made sense to put on streaming that that completely made sense especially with hbo max just starting off around that time so that makes sense but a lot of people are mad at Grace Randolph for this. And I ask myself, why are people so mad that Grace Randolph believes the Snyderverse is a mere story? And look, I've said this countless of times. She's not a good scooper. I don't actually like YouTube scoopers. To me, a lot of them get things wrong too many times to me and you even care. There's too many of there's too many scoopers on YouTube that get so much wrong that makes me think, why do people even take these guys seriously? And I'm not a scooper. I'm just someone who commentates on things that ev- everyone else is saying. That's all I'm doing. And so I've never really been a fan of Grace Randolph because all she's done is scoop, scoop, scoop. And, you know, seeing people get mad at her over this, I'm sorry, but this is loser territory. This is something, if you're actually mad at this tweet, if you're mad at the specific tweet, then you got to go outside for once, man. You got to stop living in the past. 
And look, it's not like Grace Randolph is saying that the Snyderverse fandoms uh, or the Snyderverse fandom is a bunch of idiots or anything like that. No, all she's saying is, look, you guys are hoping for something that's an impossibility. You you gotta just move on. And that's just her recommendation. She's not forcing that upon you. She's just saying that that's what she thinks because I, a lot of people aren't actually thinking of this rationally. But the Snyderverse being restored is an insanely one percent chance of a possibility. And I know a lot of people are saying, but the Discovery merger and all that. And look, there is a higher chance if Discovery comes in, they would restore the Snyderverse. But you still got to consider that that is still a 1% chance because the Snyder's DCEU was an insanely divisive DCEU. Like, a lot of people want to change the past. It, like, the Flash. <laughs> a lot of people want to change the past. But Man of Steel came out and caused a lot of division. A lot of Superman fans were thinking, oh, this isn't the classic Superman I know. And then Batman vs. Superman, obviously, to me, Batman vs. Superman is one of the most divisive films of all time. Batman vs. Superman came out, and a lot of people were mad. They didn't like how the Zack Snyder's version of Batman and Superman. And I and I constantly see Snyder fans constantly forget what the past was like. Because these weren't these movies that were beloved, that made a billion in the box office. These weren't these, weren't these movies that were taking over Hollywood, that they, they were competing with Marvel, they weren't doing that, they were struggling, they were slowing down, a lot of people were insanely divisive over these films, and, you know, it's understandable Warner Bros. wants to move on, and look, Zack Snyder's Justice League still holds a special place in my heart as my favorite movie of all time, I love Man of Steel, I love Batman vs. Superman, I love Wonder Woman, but if Warner, Bro Warner Bros. is looking at this financially, and I always hate when people say, Oh, but the previous Snyder movies are more financially successful than the current DCU. And I questioned myself, wait a minute, Aquaman made a billion at the box office. And for some reason, I've heard a lot of Snyderverse fans say that's not canon to the Snyderverse. I don't get why it's not. I've seen the movie countless of times. To me, it doesn't change anything. I mean, I guess the outfits and how you access Atlantis, I guess that was changed. But besides that, it's... You, you could say that this is in the Snyderverse. Uh, but I see a lot of people constantly say Aquaman's not. But that made a billion. Joker made a billion. Uh, Shazam did pretty good. Birds of Prey did, was a financial mess. Wonder Woman 84 was not just a financial mess. It was also a critically f a mess. But Suicide Squad did, well, financially did very poorly. You got to remind yourselves Wonder Woman 84 and Suicide Squad came out during pandemic eras. And I'm not saying that the DCU is better now. What I'm saying is that the Snyder DCU was not doing as well. And it, I, I get a little frustrated when people forget that. It, it happened. It, it happened. The DCU wasn't this juggernaut on the box office constantly, uh, constantly having this massive war with Marvel. No. Marvel fans laughed at DC. They were laughing. They were laughing at us. They were, they were constantly saying... That DC will never get there. Because Bam, realistically, Bam vs. Superman should have made a billion at the box office. And I always hate when people compare the beginning of the DCU and the beginning of the MCU. Because the beginning of the DCU did make a lot more money than the beginning of the MCU. But you gotta remember, the MCU is what started off, started off this massive, uh, what's it called? This cultural shift towards comic book movies being the next big thing. While DC went into its prime era. Because... When Man of Steel came out, the Avengers had already released, uh, you already had Thor movies, you already had the Hulk movies, so people were now loving comic book movies, so Man of Steel had that advantage, and BVS also had that even bigger advantage, because these movies are just getting more popular and more popular during the time, so it's under it's understandable why DC ever got to the place it is, and... I don't get I don't get why people are so mad that Grace Randolph holds this position. Um, like, it's it's just facts. And look, if you want to restore the Snyderverse, if you're putting out the hashtags, great. I'm doing that too. But we have to look at the facts. It's understandable Warner Bros. doesn't want to continue. And before you say the fans demand it, no, you're not the fans. The fans is too vague of a term. Fans are different in every way. I've countless of times met people who hate Zack Snyder's DCU movies. And before you say Warner Bros. doesn't listen to the fans, what about those fans? What about the fans who don't like Zack Snyder's DCU? Like, don't say the fans if you're not actually calling the fans. All you're saying is your little section of fandom, which is a small section of Snyder fans. That's what it really is. And to see a lot of people... A lot of man babies crying over Grace. I've already seen even my own YouTube friends. I'll see like them putting thumbnails saying Grace Randolph 
betrayed uh betrayed the Snyder fandom like it's it's a it's a little embar- it's embarrassing man it's 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 really embarrassing to associate myself with this kind of group which is why I, during the t- recently I've been talking less and less about the Snyderverse because honestly it's gotten to a point where I'm just sick and tired of it I want it restored more than anyone I mean I literally got Henry Cavill Superman right here oh, oh he's not even in frame it's Henry Cavill Superman just right here the black suit Superman it's like I'm getting exhausted to a point where Honestly, I don't care anymore. It's just, I don't, I don't, and I know I'm going to get a lot of people commenting saying, oh, Isaac, you betrayed, because I've been called a betrayer of the Snyderverse, especially, I remember the first time I've ever been called that was when I, when I reviewed James Gunn's Suicide Squad. Oh man, my headphone fell. But <laughs> I reviewed James Gunn's Suicide Squad. I remember I constantly get messages and a lot of people commenting saying, oh, you're betraying the Snyderverse for even daring to support Suicide Squad. It's like, dude, at the end of the day, I'm a DC fan regardless of if Zack Snyder's there or not. Not only that, but I'm a bigger movie fan than I am anything, really. So, as much as I love Zack Snyder's films, I love 300, Watchmen, uh, Ben vs. Superman, Man of Steel, Army of the Dead, uh, Zack Snyder's Justice League, obviously, is my favorite movie of all time. You know, as much as he lo- I love these movies, I'm not a suck-up. I'm not a show. And Grace Randolph saying this shouldn't really offend you. And if it offends you, I'm sorry, but just unfollow her. Because she didn't even say anything personally attacking the DCU. She just said, hey, look, this is difficult. This is practically an impossibility, which it is. Like, anyone who debates saying that it's not an impossibility, I'm sorry, but you don't really know how this works. You don't know how Hollywood works. And I'm, I'm sorry, but you got to do some research. you got to figure out how box office works. Look how the Snyderverse actually did in theatrical form, which you already have two movies that can show you otherwise. Um, but it's crazy seeing all these people getting so mad at Grace Randolph's comments. And I know some people are going to get mad at my own comments. All I'm saying is, hey, look, guys, understand that the Snyderverse wasn't this financial big box office juggernaut that everyone so thinks it because I'm seeing a lot of people change the narrative like I don't know if you guys were around during 2016 and 2013 but D- the DCU was not a juggernaut it was not a financial box office successful and all that and you know it wasn't like a god tier Oscar winning like kind of time period it was just a lot of people were divisive on these films way more than any i mean the only movie that the mcu has ever done that's divisive is eternals which is actually unironically my favorite marvel cinematic universe film (laughs) eternals was the first time mcu has faced any kind of uh any kind of divisiveness uh within that movie and look honestly if you're mad at grace randolph just unfollow her just don't pay attention i don't get the point like i don't get like i see this and i'm thinking myself why are they so mad like when i saw the thumbnail on max's channel of grace Randolph, i genuinely thought she just said f you snyder fans or all that and i was like oh i guess she said something bad and then i read the tweet and i'm thinking to myself that's it i mean like just go outside man just come on man 